Lisa, we're now hearing about extra dimensions in physics. Uh, some people have enough difficulty with four dimensions, uh, adding time to the three dimensions of space. How can we begin to understand this concept of extra dimensions? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first of all, you might ask why we're even thinking about it. And the reasons really, really do have physics motivations. There really are physics motivations we're thinking about, which we can come back to. But how do we even start to think about what we mean by these extra dimensions? Well, I think most people are familiar with three dimensions, which would be like left, right, forward, backward, up, down. But um, one of the best ways to imagine how we should envision extra dimensions was actually uh, done by Edwin A. Abbott in the late 19th century in a book called Flatland. And what he said is, is, if you lived in two dimensions, you would have the same difficulties picturing and imagining third dimension that we have imagining a fourth spatial dimension or mm -hmm. higher dimensions. So what he said is, suppose that there were creatures living on flatland, say this tabletop, and how would they see the world? And um, I mean, we know there's a third dimension, but these flatlanders wouldn't be aware of it. So what would they see? Well, suppose some object like from the third dimension came through, suppose a sphere came through. A flatlander would never see the sphere in its entirety. They can't see three dimensions the same way we can't see more than three dimensions. But what they would see is a series of disks that grew in size and then decreased in size as the sphere went through. So they would get all the information about third dimension or about this three-dimensional object, even though they couldn't necessarily reconstruct it in, in their pictures to see that it was a three-dimensional object. So in the same way, it could be that there are extra dimensions that we don't see directly. But we can see the implications of those. But there could be signs that we could put together to tell that uh -huh. those dimensions exist. So what, what are the motivations from physics' point of view? Why does physics seem to have a need for these extra dimensions? Well, some people would say we do have a need, some people would say we don't. <laughs> I don't want to overstate it. Right. But there's a, there are several reasons why we think about extra dimensions. Um, one is a theory called string theory, which is a theory of quantum gravity, or a purported theory of quantum gravity, trying to put together general relativity and quantum mechanics. And the point is that theory doesn't make sense if there are only three dimensions of space. You need extra dimensions. So then the question that for a physicist is, what are the implications of those extra dimensions, and why haven't we seen them? But there are other reasons, too. And one reason that I find very compelling is that there really are problems in particle physics that are very difficult to address in the context of just three spatial dimensions. The standard model of particle physics, which describes matter's most basic mm -hmm. elements and their interactions, was put together in the 1970s. And there are some outstanding questions. That's, although the model works beautifully, it makes beautiful predictions, agrees with experiment to a high level of precision. There are some fundamental elements of that theory that we don't understand yet. And it, people have been trying to solve it, as I said, since the 70s and haven't come up with a completely compelling solution. And it seems that if there are extra dimensions of space, it might be easier to find ways to address them. And also in the standard questions. model of, of particle physics, we have so many different parameters that have to be entered by hand that can't mm -hmm. just fall out of the theory, what are the 26 or some large mm -hmm. numbers. But, well, there are a lot of parameters in the standard model, namely masses of particles, charges, etc. Um, and there are ways of trying to address them in the context of three-dimensional space. But again, if I showed you one of these examples, you would say, that looks pretty complicated. <laughs> and so another possibility is that we can have extra dimensions and try to address it there. And we don't know the answers. We don't know that those problems will be solved. But it's a new forum, and there's a lot of new ideas. I should say that even if these ideas about extra dimensions turn out not to be right, it turns out that they've given rise to new ways of thinking about even three dimensions. So there really are new ideas that have come out of it. I think that's terrific. Uh, that's the most important part of new ideas. It's not necessarily that they have to be right, but they force us to, to rethink our conception of everything else that we're doing. Although we do prefer if they're right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, let's talk about some of these extra dimensions. Um, what do they look like? I, I know the word is uh, compactification, which means they're extremely small, they're curled up. Uh, how, how can we understand well, these that's extra one, dimensions? That's one way of, of, but actually another possibility is that they're very curved or warped, the mm -hmm. way Einstein taught us can be true in, mm -hmm. in the presence of energy. And the implications of the extra dimensions can be very different, depending on whether they're hidden because they're very tiny or hidden because they're very warped. Oh. Um, so basically, soon after the idea of extra dimensions was introduced in the context of physics, and so basically in the 1920s, people started thinking about this idea mm -hmm. that you could have very tiny dimensions. Um, and the idea is rather intuitive, which is something is really small, you don't see it. 
And that's basically what's going on, perhaps, with extra dimensions of the universe. However, as I said a moment ago, it could be also that space-time is really dramatically warped so that we only really experience one region of space and other regions of space have less influence on us. And that could be another way that extra dimensions could be hidden. Uh, let's talk about gravity in the context of extra dimensions because uh, gravity seems to be the one uh, part of reality that can uh, uh, communicate through extra dimensions because well, it, it's related to space-time itself. I should say gravity is the one part we know should be intimately connected to all of space-time. There could be other particles, there could be other forces that communicate through extra dimensions, but gravity is one that we know has to be there. And, and that, it has to be there because? It has to be there for, basically Einstein taught us that it has to be there in some sense. Because one thing is that gravity is connected to the geometry of space-time. But another way of understanding it is that it, gravity is something that interacts with energy. If you have an energetic object, it creates a gravitational field. If something is moving through a gravitational field and has mass or energy, it experiences gravity. And it better be true that that's true anywhere. If you're, you have energy in any region of space, whether it's here or off in an extra dimension, it still should experience gravity. And the fact that it's an extra dimension, we haven't seen it, doesn't mean that the kind of gravity that we're experiencing will, it may be different. I mean, the fact that it's a, it's a dimension itself, gravity must be similar in that dimension. Because since we know so little about it, Okay, so what we know is the fundamental gravitational theory. Then how we experience gravity depends on the distribution of matter and energy, which defines which gravitational field is in our environment. Mm -hmm. So there are many different ways that gravity could be experienced in our world, and that's one of the things that we explore. The For example, if you're near a black hole, you experience a very different sort of gravity right. than if you're in our environment here. Is that a good analogy to the gravity in extra dimensions to see what happens in, in black holes where you have this enormous warping of space-time? Um, there you have, the in the black hole case, you sort of have the warping of time, for example. Right. And um, in extra dimensions, you could warp space and time, for example. I see. I mean, you also get warping in some sense of, of space, but it, it works differently in the context of a black hole. But it is a good analogy in some ways. Is there any way that uh, the extra dimensions and, and, and the gravity communication between them can, can help us with what seems to be a, a very strange um, a reality where the gravitational uh, of power is so much weaker than, for example, electromagnetic forces right. like 10 to the 40th? It just seems a, an odd thing in our world that two of the primary forces have this enormous difference in power. That's right. And um, it's worse than just a mysterious question, because if you take the principles we believe are true, namely quantum mechanics and special relativity, and put them together, mm -hmm. and try to predict how these forces should be related, it would be much more natural for them to be of the same order. Mm -hmm. It's only by an enormous fudge, or what we call fine-tuning, that we get away with having these forces have such different strength. So one of the ideas that my collaborator Raman Sundram and I worked on is the idea that if space-time is really warped, it could be that gravity is essentially really concentrated elsewhere so that we are getting a very weak version of gravity where we are. Um, so gravity could be strong, but strong elsewhere. And we, where we are, we, in fact, is one way of thinking about it is that particles would be lighter than you expect them to be in a theory without this warping. And it's because particles are lighter that you experience gravity as weaker. So this could be a very natural explanation for why we experience gravity as weak. So in that model, the, the, the primary forces of, of physics would be much more similar. It's just that the, the, for, the, the, the power of gravity would be located in another dimension. Right. It has to do exactly. You can solve for it and you can see that Einstein's theory of general relativity tells you there is a particular type of warping that tells you how you experience gravity in different regions of space. And and how that 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 power and that warping would 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 uh, uh, transfer between one dimension and another in terms of well, you can think of it as transferring from, one, but really it's just that the field itself is distorted. Um, the really, uh, uh -huh. or, or if you like, the space time metric, the way we measure things, is right, distorted. Right. So mm -hmm. things that could be heavy in one place, you'd expect to be light in another, because the way we're measuring things is so different, and because the gravity is telling us that. How do you see the uh, the continuing uh, um, relevance to, to to the development of physics of extra dimensions uh, if you project forward, you know, the next several decades? Well, several decades. <laughs> we never project forward several decades because things change too quickly. 
But um, a lot will depend on what the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC, finds. That is to say there's a collider. It's going to uh, collide together protons enormously high energy. One of the questions is, will it see evidence of extra dimensions? If the idea I just told you about is right, it should see some evidence that these extra dimensions exist. It also will have to do with just our theoretical developments if it, if it continues to give us new ways of looking at ideas that we've been thinking about for a long time or even new ideas. Um, does the logical development entail these extra dimensions or not? And we don't know the answer to that. But I think that certainly if we find experimental evidence, then they're going to be part of the canon. Um, if they don't, I don't know how we'll proceed.